per usual living on this channel for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. Let's talk about funding today, specifically for futures markets, perpetual futures markets, which we mainly see on the crypto side of things, both in centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. A few months ago, I did a video on futures. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back and rewatch that video. But it's easiest just to think all of this is related, mainly based on sentiment, also based on contract duration, time position in the calendar, but mostly sentiment. So if we pull up a traditional type of futures contract with a beginning and an end, an open and an expiration, if we look at January 2024, year to date, basically. So these are some Kraken contracts. The first thing you need to know to pull these up, they've got strange names based on the month, based on the expiry. You can sort by futures on TradingView, crypto, you can find it all here. You do have to dig a little bit, but it's there. So in order to pull up the Kraken futures contracts for Bitcoin, you can find all that on TradingView. And then visually you will see, if you've no idea what I'm talking about, visually you will instantly see, okay, why is the green line, why doesn't it start before February? And why is it above the white line, which is the spot price, which is the physical price? So the, the answer to that is based on sentiment, based on duration of the contract, you will find that some of these contracts will have premiums or discounts. The red, blue, and gold line down here are the premiums in USD terms, not in percent terms. But you can see over time, both as a function of duration of the contract and sentiment, the premium has decayed over time. So this is what traditional futures look like. And different commodities will have different futures curves based on sentiment. They'll have a different number of contracts. If you compare this to the CME, the CME has tons and tons of contracts. This is a non-continuous contract, but if you were to pull up the CME version of this, there is a continuous contract. But to summarize just the Kraken futures portion, we have had a decent premium. We have had premium decay. And most recently we have had this premium attempt to zero out. You know, the premium is not expanding as time goes on, both as a function of sentiment here and duration of the contract. On different exchanges, you'll see weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, all those may have different premiums or discounts. For the most part, crypto will generally always have a premium because people in crypto are always bullish. Traders are typically always bullish. So more often than not, you will see a bullish bias on these premiums. And as I'm about to explain, the funding rates, most of the funding rates will be positive. So premium equals bullish, funding rate positive equals bullish, and the opposite negatives are bearish, typically. Okay, that's just like baseline sentiment information. And if we look at other commodities, this is crude oil, all sorts of oil contracts and derivatives. But you can see the futures curve here is deeply, deeply in backwardation. So it's saying the future contracts are worth less than the current contract. And you can see across the curve out to 2035, that's what it looks like. This is not a typical crypto futures curve. Maybe in 2022 it was when things were collapsing, when rates were rising. Uh, but this likely hints at supply glut problems, potential global slowdown problems, and that's what's being priced in here along the futures curve. So this would be bearish expectations for the future. So as we go on our merry way here, we can also look at CME funding, CME annualized basis, and arbitrage traders will come in here depending on liquidity, depending on certainty that this basis will exist, and they will smash this down by longing the ETF in this case and shorting the future and capturing the spread, capturing that premium. So that will also adjust funding, even on the perpetual side, but also on the traditional future side. But again, sentiment, price, everything is sort of baked into this value. It's not ever just sentiment. It's not ever just where price may be headed or going. But in aggregate over time, we can look at stuff like this and we can say, okay, the basis in December was insane, 20%. And now it's under 10, which for most things is significant, but this is a 50% decline in basis since December. 
and you can see how this changes depending on how bearish uh, price gets. But because of how we're positioned currently with price, it's good, in my opinion, to see the excitement, the exuberance, the bullish euphoria decline significantly. Because when funding on perpetual futures, now we're sort of mixing traditional futures and perpetual, because again, in my mind, it's all the same. If there's a massive premium on traditional futures, that is forwardation. People are very excited about the future. People think prices are going higher. On perpetual funding, very similar. It's a very bullish, very long, heavy, relatively crowded trade. It depends on historic levels, of course. But again, if we compare uh, March versus January versus when FTX exploded, right? It's, it's a different funding picture entirely. FTX explodes, funding goes ultra turbo negative, And then that normalizes. We get these ETFs, right? The ETF announcements, the ETF approvals. People get very, very bullish. Funding gets very, very bullish. ETFs launch, GBTC sells off, funding pulls down a bit and then accelerates significantly. So what you never want to see if you are on the same side of trend is exploding funding rates. Definitely a warning sign that the market is overheated. So what do we have today? We have nothing. We have, we have funding rates that are half negative, half positive. There's clearly not a lot of exuberance on one side of the market or the other. The futures price relative to the index is basically flat, right? There's no premium. There's no discount on any given day. It's essentially flat. And that is very similar to what we saw last year, by the way, we saw sentiment in September, 2023 about the same, just sideways chop, nothing. So if I'm bullish and I'm bullish and I'm right, I prefer to see negative funding. I prefer to see shorts getting added because that says we're fueling the rocket for a short squeeze. But again, what you don't want to see after months of up or accelerating prices is more people adding on to the long side. That'll expand funding, that'll expand the premium, and that will make the trade even more crowded. And you got to remember back to this idea of the basis trade, the higher the arbitrage opportunity, the more likely someone's going to be to come in here and squash the funding. Now that in and of itself should be net neutral, but oftentimes for crypto, that really isn't the case. It's people closing on the long side, capturing the premium and sort of resetting things. So premium and funding on futures contracts sort of revolves around this idea of equilibrium relative to the spot price. In times of bullishness for crypto, for Bitcoin, you will typically see expansion. If we look on the daily version of this, you see heavy expansion on a 24-hour basis. And this may change depending on the exchange, depending on who's trading on which exchange, depending on who's awake, right? So there's a lot of variables here, but in aggregate, we can see where this funding has expanded, has contracted, where the discounts have blown out. Very rare to see a discount blow out like this. There has to be typically a fundamental reason, and there was. This was FTX, right, going insolvent or publicly being insolvent. So there's no guarantee that sentiment will resume at this point in time one way or the other. But just as a sanity check, it's always good to look to see what the funding is if you're not trading futures. Funding from January to October 2023 was positive as it usually is, but it wasn't out of control. It didn't really accelerate until we made new highs in price past the July 2023 high. And we got fundamental news. We had the having catalyst, right? We can add events onto this, why we think people were as bullish as they were. And that makes sense. But it's just one more thing on top of technicals that you can say, okay, there may be a falling res falling wedge or rising wedge or descending, broadening wedge, whatever, right? Is there anything else that we can look at positioning wise, sentiment wise, to help determine what's going on here. And funding rates play a big part in that because again, if funding is super high, if funding is extremely positive, you'll have people coming in and shorting just to capture the premium. You'll have people taking profit more likely than not because this has a time component where you're just eating funding, eating funding, and it's like a shark swimming in the ocean. If it doesn't keep rising, it dies. People aren't going to sit in long positions with funding as high as it is at this point in time. So again, here it's the opposite of that. 
it's completely neutral. It's not a blown out discount or a crazy premium. It's a bunch of nothing. The question really becomes how long will this last at the zero bound and how soon will we see this expand? There's another website, Coinalize, it's free. I will put the links to all this stuff in the description of the video. And outside of Bitcoin, they have many more coins that you can look at, including Kraken exchanges, right? All sorts of fun stuff. But if we look at the aggregated funding, we can see the aggregated funding in 2020 into 2021 was extremely elevated. And you can, of course, calculate what is the eight hour reset or the one hour reset, depending on the exchange. And then what is that on a daily or monthly or yearly basis? And for altcoins, for meme coins, garbage coins, this stuff will, will explode and it'll get rather insane. But right now, as a sentiment check, not really much going on on the Bitcoin side for funding. If we go to something like Pepe, Pepe had explosive funding, and this will discourage longs to be opened and encourage longs to be closed, encourage shorts to be opened, right? You got to remember that it's always a yin yang. This is roughly what the baseline looks like somewhere down here. And in the moment, it is harder for price to go up in perpetuity, in foreverness, if funding is as high as it is, right? And you can see just because funding got that high doesn't mean price didn't later on go higher. There was a nice inverted head and shoulders we talked about on this channel. Um, and that broke out and funding never quite got that high again. So you both want to see funding in the premium expand to some degree, but there's this Goldilocks where you want sentiment to be bullish increasingly, arguably most of the time, but you don't want explosive retail FOMO like this, where it's just people too excited to go long during that time period. Before we go any further, let me mention today's video sponsor, Kraken Pro. Kraken Pro is a complete overhaul of the Kraken trading experience, will one-stop shop for advanced and professional traders. Kraken Pro enables efficient trading execution across multiple markets with a UI that allows for unique optimization tailored to your trading style. You can check out Kraken Pro with the link in the description of this video. Not investment advice. Crypto trading involves risk of loss. Cryptocurrency services are provided to U.S. and U.S. territory customers by Payward Ventures, Inc., PBI, DBA, Kraken. So on Kraken, if you are not in the U.S., you have access to other analytics, such as the funding rate or coins. You have access to, to margin, depending on your availability. So all that it does exist on Kraken. For certain individuals, uh, real quickly on this FET chart, something a lot of people have been watching now that I mentioned it a couple days ago. Uh, it looks good. It's in the daily cloud. The chart pattern looks real. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm I'm not too confident that anything is going to do much of anything until after the 18th, which is FOMC. But in a vacuum, this is certainly a tradable chart for sure. Looking at another website, CoinGlass, you can get this Christmas tree of funding rates and what most of the bears highlighted continuously in the bull market is this is overheated. All these are red and they're correct, but they're at the same time, usually wrong for weeks and weeks and weeks, because mostly there isn't some magic level where the market decides you know, enough's enough. Individually, funding isn't usually enough to roll the market over. It has to be a multi-factor problem. Too crowded. Funding's too high, the longs get liquidated, chart pattern, news, whatever, right? There has to be a bunch of stuff, but it's one thing to think about when you're discussing overbought versus oversold. So in aggregate, you can, on this website, CoinGlass, you can look at whatever your favorites are. You can highlight your favorites. You can uh, then show your favorites. Just look at those in isolation. And I know some people like to look at certain exchanges because that's where they think most of the dumb money sits and they want to be on the opposite side of the dumb money. So if dumb money is super short <laughs> on uh, a certain exchange, they don't want to be on the same side of those traders on that exchange. That's another way to, to look at this. So much like an oscillator, much like RSI, are we overbought or oversold based on funding? What is sentiment generally for these exchanges? What is aggregate? sentiment look like, right? And then that can help you decide, okay, do I want to take my 100x long position here or not? Uh, we can look at the funding rate heat map over time. This is based on open interest. Again, another thing that a lot of people loved talking about when this was very overheated 
back in March. You can see it there. If we zoom out even further, you can see how things got extended in December, extended in February. The things with, with alts is that these funding rates can snap back and forth extremely quickly because you will have a short term move in price that will just reset funding. But it's clearly a warning sign when something like WIF is at a 100, 200, 300% <laughs> funding rate for the year, very much a warning sign, right? And that was in late February, early March. Since then, a lot of this stuff has just cooled off completely. And that's what the blue colors represent here. The black bar just means it wasn't an option for trading at that current time. And then if we look at everything in aggregate relative to BTC, this is from Glassnode on Binance. And what you'd expect to see is what you see. When price started moving for weeks and weeks and weeks higher continuously, funding got hotter and hotter and hotter reset. And then it got hotter and hotter and hotter again. And this is across all assets, not just BTC. BTC funding at the top here definitely got warm, but it didn't get as hot as the sun like WIF did or some of these other coins on this list. So what is funding good for? It's good for sentiment. It's good at letting you know what are the people trading their perpetual futures doing? Are they turbo long? Are they turbo short? Are they neutral? Those are really the three things I care about. Using that in aggregate with TA, news, other catalysts that may help you position appropriately. And then as an ecosystem, crypto in its entirety, if everything gets overheated, that becomes even more of a warning sign of a be careful sign. I mean, we were talking about rising wedge going into March. Then there was an inverted head and shoulders and there was a macro head and shoulders. Then there was another inverted head and shoulders and it goes on and on and on. But funding will certainly tip my hand one way or the other. If we're seeing a so-so pattern, if we go back to Bitcoin, you know, if we're seeing, if we're seeing a so-so pattern, like we kind of did here, triple top head and shoulders and funding is still at infinity, you better believe I'm ultra careful on the long side and or tipping short. So what do we have here? Again, we have nothing really. There's not really a pattern per se. Funding is neutral. You could maybe argue some sort of eventual inverted head and shoulders. And it'll be interesting to see when and where funding takes off. Just something to watch going forward. Does funding start to expand at 65, 68, 70 new all-time highs? How soon after all-time highs, if we see that, does funding start to get crazy again? And you can go back to stuff like this, the heat map, right? Very interesting to watch, especially relative to what you think may happen with price. That's all I have for this one today. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.